In today's video we are going to make step-by-step -step Barrel's mask from the movie The Nightmare Before Christmas. I hope you like it and that you can use it for your projects, especially for Halloween. Let's do it! We are going to start with the base for the mask and the first thing we need are the patterns. You will find the link in the description box. The only material we will use for the base is a 1cm thick piece of EBA foam. It's like the puzzle floor pieces that are quite easy to find lately… yeah, those. We will trace the silhouette and we will make sure to mark the letters and the guides that we will need to assemble everything later on. We need two pieces from each side, front and reverse, so don't forget to flip the pattern and trace it from the other side as well. Here we have them all, and now the next step will be to take a cutter to cut them out. Next, before we can glue them, we need to shape them, and for this I'm going to use an old dryer at maximum power, but ideally uh, you would need a heat gun for that. We will heat this piece as much as we can, and have in mind that if you cannot shape it, that means that you are not heating it enough, but after it's really hot, the idea is to curve it inwards, like to give it a shape like half a moon, as you can see, something like this. And now that we have the first one, the only thing left for us is to do exactly the same with the other pieces. As the adhesive, I will use contact glue or contact cement, I don't know what you call it, but the hot silicone, the one from the gun, is not allowed in this channel. I don't like it. We are going to apply a thin layer of product to the two surfaces that we want to glue together. We are going to wait until it's no longer sticky to the touch, and carefully we will use the guides to glue the pieces together one by one. We will start by first putting together the side pieces, left and right, to then join them in the middle. It's like we are creating a semisphere. Okay, but if you look at it, once we are done, it doesn't look good and it's more like a noble. But the point is that we will have to wait for the contact glue to settle down overnight before we can continue. After all night, we can now fix our base, and again, the only thing that we will need is the hair dryer. I'm going to heat it from the inside and the outside, and if you look at it without doing anything, just by doing so, it modifies its shape by itself. But just in case, I'm also going to press with my hands to give it some help. This next step is completely optional, but I'm a freak, and I'll take my rotatory tool with a wood sanding head and a stone head. Let's see. With the first one, we will smooth the surface, making sure to flatten the glued pieces. It's common that after this process we get like a strange texture, so to get rid of it, what I do is um, to repeat this procedure but with a stone head. Now it looks much better. But if you know me and you know the channel, you know that for me this is not enough and that we have another step until I can be completely satisfied. And I mean to cover everything with a thin sheet of foam. This method is simple but tedious, because we will have to hit the center and then press it against the base of the mask. The only thing that we want to glue initially is the upper part, and for this, after marking it with like a pen, I will use more contact glue. 
we glue it, just the top part, and let's continue. It's tedious because we are going to do exactly the same thing, heat, shape, and glue around the whole semisphere. This is exactly the same thing as trying to cover a fondant cake without wrinkles, but in this case there will be always some wrinkles left, and no, we are not going to be able to avoid them, but that's fine. Here now we have my finished piece, so let's take care of those wrinkles. We will do it with scissors, cutting lengthwise, and then little by little we will remove material until we only have like a straight line that we can glue together along the edge. Yep, with more contact cement. And yep, afterwards I'm also going to sand these lines to make them look smooth. Have in mind that we are going to hide them with the texture and that four small lines on the sides are not as distracting as four large lines across the mask. That's what I think at least. Now it's time to take some pictures and a pencil to draw barrels features on the base. And I find funny that I pronounce barrel like the Spanish pronunciation because it's like in my brain, I'm so sorry about that. But the drawing will depend a little bit on our skills and that's fine, that's what makes it unique. Once we are happy with the result, we can outline it with a pen and personally, this is what I ended up with. We are finally going to move forward and see big changes and the first thing will be to take a pen or a knife to cut out and remove the eyes. For the teeth we will be using Fanigami. It's a nail drying dough, it has like a foamy texture when it's dry, it's extremely light, extremely cheap, but well, before doing that I will give it texture with a pyrograph. I know that the original barrel mask has no texture and that it's completely smooth, so everything that I will do now is optional. I made a version that I know I would enjoy, which is inspired by the character, but it's not entirely faithful to it, but you can do whatever you feel like, of course. So. Now you see me using the tip of the pyrograph to trace the contour of the teeth to deepen the marks. And make like indentations in the nose and create the effect of burns and bumps in the mask and all of that gross stuff. And for the wood texture, we will leave the pyrograph to take again the rotatory tool with a stone head this time. And we will press along the mask to get a nice wood grain effect. It's very easy and this is the final result. And now, yeah, we can finally grab some funny gummy. We are going to shape one by one all the teeth and is it possible to do it only with your fingers? No worry, but I recommend using like a spatula or the tip of a flat tool, whatever you can find. To integrate the piece, I try to flatten the dough against where it's supposed to be the gums, so it has like a more accurate transition, but just do your best. The truth is that I was not really confident about the final result, but surprisingly in the end this is what I like the most. After working for quite a while, I was left with something like this, and the most important thing now is that we have to let this once again dry overnight. Finally, on the next day we are ready to paint, but as always the previous step is the primer. We have two cheap options here, as usually, the white glue is one of them, and the other is vinyl latex, which will be my choice. 
While using me, apply like a uniform coat over the entire surface. Let me tell you that the primer covers the pores, hardens the piece, makes the paint glide better, etc. And we're going to have to do several layers, letting it dry between layers. In total, three or four times. As you can see, our mask is ready to paint, so we have two options. Spray paint in white if you decided not to go for the wood texture. Or paint in black if, like me, you did something similar and want to give it some depth. Nice! Now, to color, I'm going to use acrylic paints in different shades and thick old stiff bristle brushes. That's a lot. First, we will use a very clear blue-white tone for the base. So I will take a bit of paint with the brush, I will remove all the excess on a piece of paper and I will brush it lightly in only the opposite direction of the indentation details, to call it like something. Dry painting helps deposit little amounts of paint so the black underneath still shows through. Second, I will take a very soft lavender and violet to do exactly the same in the eye area, blending towards the outsides. Third, take an off-white or pastel yellow to paint the teeth. Since the paint was a bit translucent, I had to give at least three coats to get something like this, but that's okay. And if you look at it, I also applied a little bit blue right on the edge of the gums. Fourth, apply brown with the same technique to keep a bit of shadows and depth to our teeth. And later, with a thin brush, I trace the gums in the same color and also the space between the teeth. Fifth, with black, I'm going to trace the holes in the nose, some indentations on the texture, the gaps between the teeth, whatever looks good, but without abusing it. And finally, that's all. I hope you like this tutorial, that you can put it into practice, and see you on the next video.